Now that is a great demonstration of what's driving, I think, the, the breakup of Britain now, uh, because, because Scots have got a different conception of what a country can be. Our current version of democracy stops us doing a lot of things. It's the equivalent of a computer operating system that won't let you run an ad blocker that just lets everything be commercialised. Well, seen in one way, I think the problem is our political institutions. Clearly, the archaic and undemocratic first-past-the-post voting system, an over-centralised governance system, the unelected lords, the populist abuse of sovereignty, the vast networks of patronage, the stuffy and outdated conventions, public school atmosphere, the whole damn lot of it. My opening remarks are mainly about stories, the stories we tell ourselves, the stories we tell each other, and the stories the powerful and the political class tell the rest of us. We actually have the same operating system, more or less, that we had when London was the centre of a global empire that spanned a quarter of the earth. And that colonial mindset is deeply embedded in those institutions. So yes, partly the problem is our political institutions, but seen in another way, it is also about nationalisms and identity, and specifically about how England in particular has struggled to find its way in the modern world. How we cling to delusions of imperial grandeur, pretend that we are so much more than just English. That's the crisis of Britain, in a nutshell, because the, there is another state in waiting in this country, in Scotland, which has remembered a different way of operating. It's not ethnic at its best, you know, in those days we fall down. But embodied in the criteria for the independence referendum was that very different outlook. If you'd lived here for three months, you're Scottish. We know those who control the past control the present. Therefore, the stories we tell ourselves about our past will determine the parameters of what today is considered politically possible and what's ruled out. And it partly explains, for example, why England can have Brexit, but Scotland can't have independence. It's clearly very powerful. The government in London decided what form Brexit would take without any reference at all to the elected governments in Edinburgh or Belfast or indeed in Cardiff. And unsurprisingly, as a result, support for the reunification of Ireland has grown. The pressure for a second referendum in Scotland remains strong. In Wales, a new sense of national identity is on the rise. Because Scots have got a different conception of what a country can be. We're carrying it without even being totally aware of it. We deploy it when we have a big moment just comes in.